Ambassador Young. Yes, sir. Okay. There's a picture of you right at the top there. And this is a picture that was taken in our house in 1965, the house that I grew up in. I was three years old when that picture was taken. Andy was 31. Okay. So he was one of the individuals, of course, Andy was in the picture. Ralph David Abernathy was in the picture. He was 38. Herman Russell was in the picture. He was 34 years old. And Martin Luther King was in that picture. And he was 34. 1965. So that's when my relationship with Andy started. And since then, Andy has been a public servant to the 100th degree. I mean, he was the executive director of the uh, SCLC. He was a U.S. congressman for the 5th District, U.S. ambassador, the 55th mayor of the city of Atlanta. And he also changed the trajectory of this city by bringing the Olympics to Atlanta in 1996. Let's Since the Olympics changed the game here, okay, we've been on a 24-year run, thanks to Andy Young. Okay, and we're at a very critical point in this city right now. We're about to go through another run. Okay, tech companies are coming here. And they're coming because of the diversity in our institutions, in who we are, and basically the backbone of Andrew Young. And Andy has just given so much of himself. And Andy, I just want to say thank you. You've given a lot to the city, and you've also given a lot to me and my children. And I just want to thank you for that. And I'm going to turn it over to you and let you give a perspective. So thank you. Chicken, <laughs> and that's all the things I need to come to pass. <laughs> but uh, this is reminiscent of what put this city together. Mm. Pasco's is a place where every morning by eight o'clock, most of the decisions are already made. Wow. We had a fellow who used to call me up and say, Get up, little digger. Mm -hmm. Where? Uh, he said, get up, little nigga. <laughs> and I said, come on. I, 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 he said, no, no, no. If you're going to be somebody in this town, all the decisions are made by 7 o'clock. Get your ass up. Turn it. So, and sure enough, you go by Pascal's, mm -hmm. and by between 7, 6.30 and 7.30, and by 8 o'clock, everybody had been through there and you had your marching orders as to what was going to happen in Atlanta uh, for the next few days. And if you missed a couple of days, you had to stop by at night uh, at the carousel uh, and you'd still get your report. But this has been an institution for this city, so it's appropriate that we gather here. Now, I was shocked kind of depressed for a little bit about Colin Powell, but then I remembered, only in America can a kid with immigrant parents from Jamaica uh, come here, end up in the Bronx, uh, make his way through uh, City College, uh, join ROTC and come out a lieutenant, uh, and work his way all the way up uh, to the top of the food chain in the military as well as in the civilian order of the planet. 
And um, one of the things that probably will not be told uh, is that it was on Jimmy Carter's watch that uh, Colin Powell, um, Cliff Alexander, uh, was the Secretary of the Army. And President Carter told Cliff, I'd like you to get the general officers in the military in the same percentage that they are in the rank and file. And I remember Cliff, because I was at the UN, uh, sending back the list. They'd s send him a list of uh, people who were to be promoted as general. And he would count the number of blacks on there and he'd send it back. Not going to point anybody until we get our ratio moving in that direction. And uh, Colin Powell was one of those that was on that list that Jimmy Carter demanded. And the Republicans gladly took him in. Uh, and that didn't matter because he was all, he always knew who he was, mm -hmm. where he was, and why he was. When he came here, uh, I had just gotten back and gotten to be mayor, and he called me and said, have you ever been to Fort Benning? Well, he heard I was thinking about running for governor. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think you need to go down, would you go down to Fort Benning? And, uh, give a lecture, a, a commencement address. We have, we're graduating 1,500 sergeants who are coming through the various training institutions there. And I mean, I didn't realize what a favor he was doing for me. Uh, but uh, Fort Benning, other than the city of Atlanta is probably the most powerful institution in the state. And he was in charge of that. He was in charge of uh, Fort McPherson, which is now uh, Tyler Perryville. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he was still thinking about how to fit in and use the power of his office to develop his people. Now, I don't know whether he and Kasim actually served on the Howard University board together, but it was around the time that I was on the board and, and, and Colin Powell came on just after I got off and somewhere in there Kasim decided I mean, he, he ran for the seat on the board for the students. And that's when I decided he was going to be our mayor. He, he was 19, uh, 18, and uh, 18 and 19. And he ran for a student government president. And because the student government president was on the board of directors. And his campaign was that we, uh, we have too many smart, privileged young people here at Howard University. But there are many, many more that are just as smart, but not quite as privileged as we are. And we need to tax ourselves $15 a semester, a quarter. And that's about 10,000 students, so $15 a quarter uh, adds up to quite a bit of money. And I said, now when I went to Howard, it was, uh, it was the headquarters of the black bourgeoisie. And they, uh, that's where Franklin Frazier wrote the book while I was there. And I thought that Howard was just, I thought it was too sedity and phony to do something like that. And I said, if you can get these Negroes to do something for somebody else, we're going to need you to come on back home and be somebody. <laughs> and sure enough, they voted for him. And they put him on the student, on the 
the board of directors of the college, that $15 time, almost 10,000, uh, added up very quickly. And then when Katrina hit in New Orleans, they sent a hundred, I mean, yeah, I think it was about 137 students from Dillard, uh, Southern, and Xavier up to Howard. And Kasim, as the chairman of that uh, fund, arranged for each of the students coming there in need with nothing. They gave every student a thousand dollar gift card to get themselves off their feet. And I said, no. I said, you hurry up and finish law, get, get to law school, get out of law school, come back to Atlanta and run for something. In 20 years, we're gonna need a mayor like you. Now in exactly 20 years, when he turned 40, we elected him mayor. And I think he was a very good mayor. Now, they always find a lot of faults with us. But <laughs> talk about the devil who spells iron just on Cut you off. <laughs> Don't go nowhere. I'm coming right back. Okay. All right. Is man. everybody going to clap for the next yeah. man?
Georgia State. School here at Georgia State. And I said, I need you all to figure out how we built the uh, Atlanta airport from nothing. And see, when I flew in here, it was about 1957, and it was not as, the, the airport port was not as big as this room. It was a Quonset hut with one runway. And now it's the world's busiest airport, again, bigger than Beijing, China. And you can't be the mayor of a world-class city with world-class institutions if you don't know anything about how the train runs. And it started with Marvin. Uh, and only 400 people were the margin of victory on Marvin. And yet Marta opened the door for other things. And then the airport opened more doors, and then the Olympics opened more doors, and Kasim has taken it to a new level. I think I left the city about two million, and now it's almost seven million. So you got to have somebody that knows what they're doing, Amen. that cares about people. Amen. But remember, and I get mad when people talk about corruption, because they don't ever talk about corruption. What happened to the outer perimeter? Mm -hmm. See, so that was money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And we had plans. And it disappeared. But the newspapers have run it. Uh, uh, they have never run a page, I mean, a paragraph on it. And yet, if we could get these trucks off of 285 mm -hmm. and send them around a 60 mile uh, outer perimeter, mm -hmm. This would be a, a new city, a different city. But those are problems. The opportunities are that uh, I, I just went down to Fairburn and they got Googles down there, got 4,000 workers. And I walked through their place and almost all of them are black. Now they used to cuss me out, they really did. They would talk about me going abroad, going overseas, and uh, wasted money, and they didn't realize that we were bringing back business. And the business that we brought back, the black folk would give me help, Ain't no niggas gonna get them jobs. Them, them white folks jobs. They, you think we gonna get up on those tall buildings? And I got a long lens camera, and I used to take the pictures of men and women up there on those girders putting those, those buildings together. So we have a city that is comparable economically to Norway. Norway is about 400 billion. Atlanta and the surrounding immediate counties is 399 billion. And uh, you just can't decide because you're cute or because some white folks like you or some black folks like you that you're gonna run this city. You've got to know what you're doing. And I told Kasim when he was a student, I said, you know, you need to come on back to Atlanta and run for something. I didn't say what. But then the next time I saw him, he was in uh, Morton's. And he was in, 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 in the, a private room with all of the chicken pluckers. Because, and I said, you understand this job. The people who sell chickens, we sell more chickens than anything else in the world. <laughs> See, and, 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 they have a convention here every year, but that's the state, that's the state outside the city. So he was in the state for eight years, 11 years, learning how the state runs and how the city keeps the state running. And he got along with every governor we had. And everybody has been able to do that because we don't have anything 
we don't need anything that they have except to be left alone and to be shown a little respect. And I think that uh, I think that we need that kind of peaceful guidance and administration. And amongst ourselves, mm -hmm. here's the other problem you have as mayor, that you have, every time you have a contract, there's six or eight, sometimes 10 people on the same contract. One person has to get it. And you got six people mad, or five people mad, see. And I remember one time, I wouldn't get into that, one time they called me and they said, they're two of your good friends, and they tied for a bid. And I said, I, I, I don't want to even know who they are, because I don't want them mad with me. They can all be mad with me anyway. And they said, well, what do we do? And I said, call up Billy Aaron and ask them who gave the most money to the United Negro College Fund. And whoever gave the most money to the United Negro College Fund, give them the bid and tell them why they got it, wow. and tell the other. But now, that was only, for that case, in almost every other case. Now, Herman Russell built the city hall. He built much of the airport. But he always had a white partner. They never sued me about the white partner. They assumed that Herman Russell and I were running together, but I didn't, I knew Herman in that picture that I uh, was talking about. But once I became mayor, I didn't speak to Herman Grandma. I didn't get invited to his house for dinner. See, I, I, I mean, you, you couldn't do that. And so, People are always going to complain, but I, I told them before you came in that I thought that you sat on the Howard University board with General Colin Powell. And so I turn over this microphone is my way of hoping that I'm turning over the city to you and your yes. friends yes. Uh, yes. to guide us and lead us and uh, keep us keeping on. Reverend Ambassador Mayor. Oh, so, whew. Ambassador. You know, today we're in the home stretch. We're 16 days away from having our city back. 16 days away uh, from making Atlanta safer, healthier, and stronger. But to be honest, you know, I've been going at it because we're in the home stretch, Jerome. And uh, event to event to event, zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, but today my heart was a little heavy because when I woke up, General Colin Powell had passed, and he was a man who, as Ambassador Young pointed out, was on the board with Howard University with me for a long time. And like Ambassador Young used to give me advice, check on me and mentor me, including during some of the worst days I've had um, recently, he still called and checked on me. So to lose General Powell today is really tough, but it made me look forward to tonight even more. And I hope um, every single person in this room rise to your feet because of the special man who has poured into all of us who we still have here. And we all need to just recommit to giving one of the greatest people our country has ever produced his roses right now. Ambassador Young, we love you. Yeah. Yes. God is not finished with you yet. Amen. He's not finished with you yet. That's right. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I, I knew that every person who runs the city of Atlanta, certainly every black man who runs the city of Atlanta, is going to have a period of challenge. I knew that.
But since I was 13 years old, when I met at Bastion Young at Ben Hill United Methodist Church, and then again when I used to move my nameplate to sit next to him at, on the board of trustees at Howard University, I would get there early, Stefan, and I would take my nameplate and I would move Vernon Jordan's nameplate because they would put all of the big people next to each other, but I would get there early and I would move my plate and put it next to Ambassador Young and I would read everything. I stay up all night making sure that I knew anything. If he had any question, any concern, I wanted to be the one to lean over and whisper in his ear that I knew the right answer. <laughs> and when it was all said and done, he said, you need to come home. I was thinking about going to work at a company called Time Warner in New York. He said, you need to come home um, because the city's going to need a person like you. But and then you said a mayor like me. You did say that what it How was. Many years? Yeah, in we, 20 years. In 20 years. <laughs> and then when we were in the suite at the Hyatt, sitting on the couch, when they come to, came and told me that I had won, was Ambassador Andrew Young. Mm -hmm. wow. So I have said it often, I'm going to reiterate it again, certainly as, as we approach election day. No matter what happens, I never would have been there without Ambassador Young taking interest in me and believing in me. And now it's up to all of us, Alicia, to take an interest in other folks who are behind us. And that's really what this election is about. This election is about whether the people who are behind us, Dwayne, are going to have the shot that we have. They deserve to lead a city of Atlanta that's not separated into a city of Buckhead and another part of Atlanta. They deserve to lead the entire thing. And right now, because of crime and violence being used as an excuse to crack this city and tear us apart. And so I'm crystal clear on why I'm running. But I tell you what, people are misreading what's going to happen. I am definitely going to reduce crime and violence in the city of Atlanta. I am definitely going to build a police department that can secure the city that's grown by 71,000 people, most of whom moved here while I was mayor. I'm definitely going to do all of that. Yes. But after that, I'm going to take the skills that I learned to do big deals like Mercedes-Benz Stadium which is $1.7 billion. State Farm Arena, when we renovated that. Pot City Market, when it was nothing but an abandoned building. Buckhead, Atlanta, when it was two holes in the ground. The Atlanta Beltline, when it was getting ready to become insolvent. I'm going to take the skill that we applied to that, and I'm going to put that skill in the young black men, young black girls, and turning this city around, and pouring into people in a way that folks do not expect because of the teachings of Ambassador Andrew Young. I'm going to do it differently this time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so for all of you, y'all better get ready. All right. Because we're going to deal with crime and violence. We're going to keep the city whole. When I win this election, I'm highly confident that the folks at the Georgia General Assembly are going to give me an opportunity to put our city back together. But on the other side of COVID, you all, on the other side of this pandemic, mm -hmm. it's getting ready to be the greatest economy that this city has ever had. Yeah, and that includes the economy that we had in the last eight years, Stefan. Yeah. Because here's the deal. The government right now is working to spend more money than has been spent in the history of the United States. And the last time that was the case, we were able to keep deepen the port of Savannah, get 101 approvals from President Obama's administration, win four out of six Tiger grants, win a $30 million choice neighborhood grant, and build the biggest economy that the city has had in its history. But I didn't have two Democrat U.S. senators and a president for whom the state of Georgia had voted when we did that the last time. What do you think we're going to do this time? Mm. So, what I want to do with meetings like this is, as opposed to just political fundraisers, we just need to do business development meetings. Yeah. I'm telling y'all what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to build light rail between Lindbergh and Emory University and the CDC, which raised their hand and annexed into the city of Atlanta when I was mayor. 
And then we're going to do light rail around the Atlanta Belt Line, and we need a six runway at, at Hartsfield Jackson Airport. When you put all of those things together, you have an economy that's going to have five to seven to eight billion dollars over the next four years, and I haven't even started talking about us winning the World Cup. So all you architects and engineers and lawyers and all of the rest and professionals, you better get ready. You better take these 20 or 30 days that I'm running from there and get ready. Because it's time for Atlanta to go again. It's time for this city to be the unchallenged leader in the southeast. Stephon west to, to Dallas, Texas, which really is just trying to be us. East to the Atlantic Ocean, north to Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, south to Miami, which is really trying to be us. We're getting ready to tell every single one of them that Atlanta is back. And that we are back. We're going to turn water boys into water men. We're not going to be on these intersections anymore. They're going to be delivering water to all the departments of the city of Atlanta every day and Jerome Russell's going to teach them how to build a business and run an organization and we're going to reclaim about 200 lives and they have no idea what's about to happen to them because of what you're doing in this room today. Yeah. And so I want you to know I'm not tired, I'm not sleepy, I'm fired up, I'm ready to go. I'm hitting the ground six in the morning every single day, working until my eyes close. When I leave here, I get on a plane to go to Detroit. I'm in Detroit in the morning and back in the afternoon because I'm going to beat every single one of them. Yeah. Every single one of them. I am not going to stand by and watch a 62% increase in crime and violence throw away what this man built. Yes. Jerome, what your father built. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether y'all remember, but when I got elected last time, we had a dinner over at SunTrust Bank. Jerome, you were there, your dad was there, Charlie Loudermilk was there, Ambassador Young was there. And we talked about how Atlanta became Atlanta. And they told me at the end of the meeting, don't screw it up. But we didn't do that. We built, hired 900 police officers. We moved the city's credit from two levels above jump to double A plus from Standard & Poor's, Moody's & Fitch. We took the construction sector from 400 million to 5 billion. We took the motion picture sector from 400 million to 9.5 billion. We took the technology sector and grew it to the greatest level it had ever been. And now I'm getting ready to go into television commercials. And if you all think the movie business is something, you just wait till we start filming television commercials in the city of Atlanta. It's three times the size of the motion picture business. And so I need you not only to give to me, I need you to be for me. This election in the life of the city is as important as when Ivan Allen beat, uh, beat uh, Lester Maddox. Lord, I mean. That's what's at stake here. And so how I'm here today to humbly ask for your support, to ask for your vote, to ask for your energy, to ask for your passion. Because Atlanta is worth it. And our city is on the line right now. Thank you. Woo!